here in the midst of white supremacy, coonery, buffoonery, lampoonery, and jigaboonery. With all the nonsense going on out there, it becomes very, very easy to become discouraged, dispirited, disenchanted. It's very easy for that to set in. Don't get me wrong. I understand. It's very, very easy for that kind of thing to happen. And I get it. Okay? I get it. And you've got a bunch of people out there talking about intangibles. Now, what makes the Black Channel, what makes what we do here in intelligent black society so different, what makes it so rare and so different, so unique, is the fact that we talk about the world in realistic terms. We don't talk about the world in fantasy terms. We don't talk about the world that way. We talk about the world and what's going on in it in realistic, concrete terms. And that makes us different from anybody else because our requirements are so vastly different from anyone else you're going to find. And we look at what's happening and then we start to notice and recognize things and that's what we take, that's what we take notice of. While everyone else is just stumbling around trying to figure out what they want to do, we are the people who actually know what's going on. And I saw an article today that really when I saw it, it was one of those moments where you see it and just reading the headline makes you optimistic, not just about the world, but about life in general. Associated Free Press headline. Now, it was dated Valentine's Day, February 14th. New South African law to ban foreigners from owning land. Just that headline alone validates so much. Just that headline by itself validates so much, redeems so much, makes the efforts of so many martyrs worth it. Just that headline by itself. That they are, the president of South Africa is proposing a new law. And now you notice how they worded the headline, new South African law to ban foreigners from owning land. Now they're saying it as if the law has already been passed. They're saying it as if it's already been passed. And that's the headline. You have to read the actual story to find out. By the way, no, the president is just proposing a law. But they want to put the alert out. You see, that's how white supremacy works. They ring alarm bells at the instant that trouble appears. And they will lie. This headline is a complete lie. But that's not the point. The headline... The headline is intended to sound the damn alarm. We don't care if it's got to be a lie. White supremacy doesn't care. That's not the point. The point is maintaining power. And if you have to lie to maintain power, damn it, you do it. But the whole point here is that we are to retain our power. Simply end of discussion. They don't care if it's a lie. They don't care if it's fraudulent. They are trying to put their people on the notice and put their people on alert that black people are waking up and that they are no longer looking to us as their gods. And if black people around the world is already happening in America, the, the, the cages are rattling in Britain and now the cages are officially rattling on African soil. These Africans are on the verge of undoing 500 years of oppression. They're on the verge of undoing it in a decade. And this is to sound the alarm. There is no genocide. We're going to just stop you from owning land. No, 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 no. Now look for the United States government and the British government. Look for them to start declaring Africa a rogue nation. Terrorist state. Economic sanctions. 
Now, there will be no such sanctions in Israel. There will be no such sanctions there, of course. No, nothing like that. And there will be no such sanctions on Britain or America. No, 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 nothing like that. But for Africans dictating their own destiny, that's a problem. It's always been a problem. Because the goal has always been to get you to stop focusing on power, wealth, and influence. And the basis of all economic progress is where is your homeland? And if we can deprive you of a homeland, well, you have no identity. And if you have no identity, you can gain power, wealth, and influence, but you don't actually have a united ideal of what you're gaining the power, wealth, and influence for. So this idea that Africans are starting to judge things on their own terms, this idea that Africans are going to start deciding their own future and that we are not looking to white gods, that we are going to start dictating these things on our own terms, you stand upon African soil. This is the single most frightening, world-shattering moment that you have seen since Marcus Garvey. Their ultimate nightmare come to life. Now, when you talk to white supremacists ordinarily, you know, they usually tell you. They usually tell you that Africa's a cesspool. Africa's a slum. Africa's no good. Who gives a damn about Africa? Africa's worthless. Nobody cares about Africa. Africa is worthless. It's no good. It's useless. It's dirty. It's poor. It's worth nothing. So, you would think... That if they propose a law that says, okay, fine, you can, we no longer allow foreigners to buy the dirty soil in the dirty nation with the dirty people. You would think the Europeans would just say, meh, who cares? But if you take a look at the comment section on Yahoo and other places, the white supremacists are livid. Hundreds of comments, and they are absolutely furious. I mean, they are absolutely enraged that Africans would say, okay, no more foreigners on the dirty soil of Africa. We're dirty and diseased and impoverished people. No more foreigners on the dirty soil. And they are enraged. They are absolutely enraged enraged now why would that be why would that be why would that be Because they understand that white supremacy is not about truth. It's not about equality. White supremacy is not about that. White supremacy is about control. White supremacy is about power over your dead body. That is what white supremacy is all about. And that's what it's always been about. Now, the article reads, I'm going to read the article for you here. It says, Johan Dateline Johannesburg, South African President Jacob Zuma, who has a checkered past at best, by the way, that's me saying that, has proposed a law barring foreigners from buying real estate in the country under sweeping land reforms, his office said Saturday. The reforms are aimed at rectifying inequalities that have persisted since colonial days and apartheid, with white farmers still owning most of the land and are slated to be enacted this year. That's right, ain't sitting on it. That is scheduled to be enacted this year. We're going to undo centuries in a decade. We're going to do it now. The law on foreign ownership cannot be applied retroactively. Now that is a flaw here. 
but the president's office said Saturday the government would exercise a, quote, right of first refusal if the land is deemed strategic. In other words, eminent domain that the United States and European governments have used for centuries. The government has the right to exercise eminent domain. Now, if it's good enough in America, it'll be good enough in Africa. Thank you very much. The reform is aimed at addressing, quote, the need to secure our limited land for food security and address the land injustice of more than 300 years of colonialism and apartheid, the statement said. Now, why would anybody object to that? Don't you want to correct the injustices of colonialism? But you go down to the comment section, they're like, hell no, let injustice reign. Let injustice ride. Liberty and injustice for all except us. In the future, foreigners who currently own some 5-7% to 7 of South Africa's land would be allowed only to lease property for between 30 and 50 years and may be required to cede land considered strategic. Now, here's the next, here's the subtitle they put in here. Specter of Zimbabwe reforms. Specter, a ghost, a ghoul, a goblin. I mean, this is in their article now. This will be the free press. Specter of Zimbabwe reform. So what Robert Mugabe did is a specter, a demon, an unwelcome haunt. You know, another word for specter is spook. Associated free press. Another word for specter is spook. Maybe you, maybe you should have just said the spooks of Zimbabwe. Maybe you should have said that since that's probably what you really meant. A prominent realtor dismissed the bid as, quote, a severe miscalculation that is likely to have serious repercussions on investor confidence in South Africa. Quote, while the percentage of foreign ownership is low, the caliber of ownership is exactly what we need in this country, said Lou Geffen of Sotheby's International Realty. So Lou Geffen, a white man... Of Sotheby's International. That's right. We've got our colonial hooks in South Africa. And we, the white invaders, we, the bankers for the white invaders, are telling you that this is exactly the kind of ownership that you need. You need foreign ownership on your soil. Is exactly the type of ownership you need. Why, why not just keep going till you're 25% foreign owned? So the guys who are buying up your land and have subjugated you for centuries, Mr. Geffen of Sotheby's is telling, he, the wolf is telling the chickens that don't worry about this wolf's den next to your, ch your chicken coop. That's exactly what you need next to your hen house is a wolf's den. You're letting the rapist tell you where you should live. Oh no, white supremacy is not about playing fair. It's about dealing from the bottom of the damn deck. It's about cards up your sleeve. It's about busting the other guy over the head with a chair. It's not about fair play. It's about winning. If you have to lie, you lie. You cheat, you cheat. You steal, you steal. You disenfranchise, you disenfranchise. You kill, you kill. But it is about Power and control. It is not about fairness. It's not about justice. Damn sure not about what's right. Never been about that. He goes on to say what we are effectively saying to them is they're not welcome here. Mr. Geffen, you aren't welcome there. There's no such thing as a white South Af there's no such thing as a white African. But they're trying to claim that the simple fact that they are present gives them African citizenship simply because they are present. Well, by that definition, I should be able to throw your daughter over my shoulder, and if I rape her, simply the presence of my sex organ inside of her should validate me as her husband. Oh, wait a minute, that is an old European practice, isn't it? Oh, wait a minute, that is an old, not new, ancient European practice.
practice that if I'm the first person to rape your daughter, then she becomes mine. This idea that we can walk up, kill people, rape them, and take what they have, and then claim that we now have ownership rights to that which we stole. That the fact that we have possession of it now gives us rights. So if I kidnap your daughter and keep her for 10 years, I've had possession for 10 years. I now have rights to her, do I not? Well, according to Mr. Geffen of Sotheby's International Realty, yes. Yes, you do. According to him, yes. If I can rob, steal, and rape your land long enough, eventually I can claim that I am now an African by nothing more than the persistence of my presence. This is white supremacy in the 21st century talking exactly like it did in the 1800s, 1700s, and 1600s. And you want to tell me that we are going to build this black and whatever coalition with them? With him telling you that we are effectively saying that they are not welcome here. As if he is an African. As if he can actually claim that he is an African. You should be insulted and offended that somebody who could never claim Africanness is now trying to dictate to you what it means to be an African. Buddy, you are a damn squatter on our land. Quote, the highly ins... Now, this is the, the news writer saying this now. The highly insensitive dossier evokes the specter of the land reform program. Now, it's spelled M-M-E, so that means that the person writing this is British. The highly sensitive Dozier dossier evokes the specter of the land reform program in neighboring Zimbabwe in the early 2000s when hundreds of white farmers were violently evicted from their land. Now, what they don't mention here is how did those white farmers get their land in the first place? Did they walk in and buy it? Did they negotiate for it? Did they pay anybody for it? Well, the, the white farmers were violently evicted. Can we discuss how they got it? It's only an injustice if they got it justly. You're talking about how they got removed. Now, that's the same as saying that Saddam Hussein was... They don't talk about Saddam Hussein being violently evicted from Iraq. They don't talk about how the British and the Americans are violently evicting the ISIS. But these white farmers are being violently evicted. You cannot evict a rapist, a murderer, and an invader. You cannot evict him. Eviction connotes that you have rights to be there. And you have no rights. You have none. You lie and tell yourself that everything you touch belongs to you. And this is how white supremacy sees itself, that it is the master of all it surveys and everything it lays its eyes upon, forget its hands, everything it lays its eyes upon, it simply has possession by virtue of the fact it laid eyes on you. Because I am a god, I am up here, you are down here. You are a lower class of being, therefore you can become property. And when they look at us as Africans in our land, the fact they laid eyes on you means you are possessions. Welcome to the Crusades. The government last year relaunched a claims process for black families removed from their land under apartheid rule to apply for compensation. They were given five years from June 2004 to make their claims, with as many as 400,000 requests for compensation expected at a cost of between 130 and 180 billion rand, which translates to 12 to 17 billion dollars. Half a million requests expected. Zuma said Thursday that more than 36,000 claims had been submitted so far. Oh, damn, yeah. Oh, damn, yeah. It is time for your ass to grow wings and leave. 
And why is it that the British are not speaking in favor of this? You've got all these white supremacists in Britain who don't like all of the Muslims and Africans and whatnot coming to Britain, but you don't hear them arguing in favor to repatriate their British people from South Africa. And that is because colonialism is not about repatriation. Empire building is not based on repatriation. It is based on invasion. And these people are the invaders on the front line and they are supporting their invaders on the front line. That you are supposed to be invading South Africa to soften them up to make it easy for whites to come in and steal all the resources at no cost, which is what they've been doing for hundreds of years now. That's why it is critical that they keep this invading force in place because the invading force is like Mr. Geffen at Sotheby's. They tell you that, oh yeah, you should sell, you should do like they did with um Firestone and just sell millions of acres for pennies on the dollar, for pennies on the acre. Millions of acres for $60,000. Millions of acres, $60,000, while they make billions on rubber plants. But you will get $60,000. And Mr. Geffen of Sotheby's, he will never suggest that Africans charge more for the resources, that Africans do more. He is there to tell you, hey, living in poverty is cool. Just wait until, you're, until we decide to pay you more. Wait until we decide to give you more. Don't do anything on your own. Wait until we say it's all right for you to get more. You may get your hell out of our faces. The time is now. Hell, the time was 500. The time was 2,000 years ago. The time was 2,000 years ago. We're late to the damn party. And African justice cannot wait another day. Justice for Africans cannot wait another day. Not another day. The next phase will be to split up sprawling farms, limiting land ownership for any individual to 12,000 hectares. That's 30,000 acres per person. Damn that 40 acres and a mule. South Africa said things about to get real. Things about to get real. And the government would purchase and redistribute any land in excess of the limit. 30,000 acres. We can start building worldwide economies with that, which is why they don't want it. The legislation was the subject of a campaign promise ahead of Zuma's re-election in 2014. So he made a campaign promise that out with the boars. Out with the boars. Out with the invaders. Out with the colonialists. And every African should be on board with this. Watch your bed winches and your coons start yelling. They're going to start screaming and howling because black empowerment scares them because they understand they would have to answer to us for their crimes. Black empowerment scares Clarence Thomas because he understands he would have to answer to black people for his crimes. It scares the Larry Elders and the Charles Barkleys. They never want to, contrary to what they tell you, they don't ever want to see black people prosperous because they know that once we're prosperous, they would have to answer to us for their crimes. And they never want to see that happen. Never. Ever. Never. Observers say Zuma's aim is to steal thunder from his most vocal adversary, Radical pop radical populist Julius Malema. So you can't read this article without them. This now this is supposed to be just reporting the news. And so far they've told you the specter of Zimbabwe violently evicted radical populist. I mean, really? How in the hell is this news and you keep throwing all these adjectives in there? When you see somebody constantly injecting adjectives into a story, he's not trying to report the facts to you. He is trying to form your opinion. So by the time you get to the end of what he's reading, you think, well, the world's gone nuts. Somebody's got to stop these violent evictors. Somebody's got to stop these violent invaders. Somebody's got to stop these radicals. Somebody's got to stop them. So when the Europeans take action and start invading the land, you say, well, it's a good thing they're there to stop these violent, radical Africans from claiming 
their own African land. Good thing we have the Europeans to show up to stop these violent African radicals from claiming African soil for Africans. Glad we got Europeans to show up and violently, violently attack Africans for Europeans to control African soil. Because we would never want Africans to control African soil. Africans controlling African soil is radical. Africans controlling African soil is scary. It's a specter. Ooh, it's spooky. It's frightening. Scary. This is why you need the Black Channel. This is why you need it. Observers say Zuma's aim is to steal thunder from his most vocal adversary, radical populist Julius Malema, who has advocated outright expropriations without compensating ejected farmers. You cannot compensate a rapist. You don't compensate a rapist. You don't compensate a thief. But remember, you're dealing with white supremacist rules. Under white supremacist rules, thieves are supposed to be, you're not supposed to let the, you're not supposed to tell, take back what a thief has. If the thief is white and he took it from a black person, it's not stealing because by virtue, no crime that a white person can commit against a black person can be considered a crime, not under white supremacist rules. Black people have no rights that whites are obligated to observe or, con or, or, or or obey none black people have no rights that a white person is obligated to observe none by definition if we are whites doing it to you then by definition it cannot be wrong by definition, it is right. It is just by definition. If we're white doing it to you, it's okay. If we're white doing it to you, it's all right. By definition. By definition. Observers, Zuma's cabinet must approve the proposed legislation, after which it would be put to public consultation and a parliamentary review before the president can enact it, his office said in a statement. Quote, environmentally and security sensitive lands, those that are historic and have cultural significance and strategic lands, will be classified by law and land ownership by foreign nationals, non-citizens, in these areas will be discouraged, Saturday's statement said. A 1913 law gave non-white residents access to only 10% of the country's farmland, which was subsequently revised upward to 13%. The rule put in place a system that seems that still sees a majority of the best land in white hands. Now, they save this till the very end of the article, by the way. They save this until the very end of the article. I only got two more sentences to go. Do you notice how they went through all of that? They're not using any adjectives here to describe how the whites got the majority of the best land. Why is it they're not using any adjectives to describe how the whites got it? Now, listen to what they say next. Hundreds of thousands of blacks were expelled from their lands in a system that was reinforced after 1948 under apartheid. And they said hundreds of thousands of blacks were is hundreds of thousands of blacks were expelled from their lands. They didn't say evicted. They didn't say violently evicted. Black folk were killed and murdered in droves. But they don't say that. Now, when they talked about whites, they said the whites were violently evicted. When they talk about blacks, do you see what they did? You were expelled. Expelled as if you were just removed from school. So whites are violently evicted. Blacks are violent. But the good Christian Europeans, why they didn't use any violence. They, they won all that land in the card game. They won all that land playing three card Monty. Why the blacks just gave up all their land and just let the Dutch and, and the British come riding on in. If you let these people tell it, 
And they say that until the very, very end. Why didn't they give that at the beginning so you would have some context? Because this is not about rightness or fairness or justice. This is about defending imperialism, white supremacy, and its right to kill, rape, and slaughter. That's what this is about. That's what it has always been about. That is what it will always be about. And it will never change. Never. White South Africans, it says, around 10% of the population still own as much as 80% of the land 20 years after the end of apartheid. White South Africans still own as much as 80% of the land years after the... They say years. You mean two decades. It's been decades since the so-called end of apartheid. And yet, the white South Africans still own most of the best land. And still have control of most of the land in South Africa. One person wrote, please, RSA, wake up and smell the roses before it is too late. It's time now, RSA, to stand together and remove Zuma and his ANC morons from power and abolish the ANC altogether. This is the only way to get RSA back to its feet instead of on its knees. Now, I understand why many people have left RSA as a black government anywhere in Africa lines its own pockets and never put back monies to help their own people. The way of government is not helping, this way of government is not helping only destroying years of building farms, etc. to be a viable industry. One person said, I can agree that settling the highly unfair land distribution issues, they don't say the violent genocide, Highly unfair land distribution issues as highly unfair. It's not unfair. There should be no non-Africans. There should be no non-melanated people owning land. There were no non-melanated people. You, the, if, you do, if you are not a melanated African, you have no reason to be there. You are an invader. Period. The highly unfair land distribution issues of the last century can be fair. However, for example, Mexico took this route a hundred years ago, murdering innocent middle class white Mexicans of Spanish descent, took away their haciendas the white Mexicans legally inherited, and redistributed the land among the peasants. It seemed like a feel good idea for the peasants, and the Aido land laws still exist today. But it brought bad economic imbalances of power that plagued the country today. And this person goes on a long screed, several paragraphs long. They are shaking in their boots at the idea that Africans will actually own African soil. Do you see how white supremacists around the world came together for that? After telling you that they didn't care about Africa, to hell with Africa, damn Africa. And as soon as we say, all right, Africa back to the Africans. Oh, uh -uh, no, no, no. But wait a minute. I thought you said to hell with it. No, we just play that mind game on you. We're very concerned about Africa. We're very concerned about it. And if you try to touch it, damn it, we'll kill you. So now they show their true colors. Now they show their true stripes. Now they show what they're really about. Now they are exposing what they really believe and what they're really here for. This is about the death, murder, and subjugation of every African on the planet. That as long as they control the resources, even if they're a numerical minority, they understand they still control you. It's about the power, wealth, and influence to dominate and kill us down to the very last black person on earth. And they understand what that person just told you. We have to make our move now. The time is now. You notice they didn't say political reforms. The ANC has a stranglehold on power. So the only way that you can overthrow the ANC is violently. And this person is saying, that's right, violent overthrow. You got that. We whites have a right to occupy, steal, and rape your African soil and the African people. We have a right to be here. That we stole your land fair and square. We stole it and took it fair and square. And they're looking to see if we're going to be stupid enough to let that keep happening.
Julius Malema is bearing fruit. They wanted to tell you that he was an outsider. How is it there? How is it even Zuma made this as a campaign promise? This is not something on the periphery of African consciousness. This is not something on the borders, on the fringes. Julius Malema is not a fringe individual. He represents modern mainstream African thought. But the whites are hoping that black people in America will not accept it as such. That's what they are hoping, is that we will not accept it as such. That's what they're hoping. They are hoping that those of us reading it, that they, I mean, they never stop the education and the re-education. They've never stopped the brainwashing. They are always, always on the hunt to spoil and, and, and desecrate and, and contaminate new minds going into the future. Always. Always. That is what it has always been about. So they're going to tell you that Julius Malema is a radical. As if that, oh, he's out of touch. The average African wants the white invaders here. The average African likes the white invaders. The average African likes living in poverty while 10% of the population that stole the land at gunpoint lives on hundreds of acres that they stole from the people. The white, the blacks in Africa like it. Now, blacks, you can get a leg up, but what you need to do is you need to ask us, the people who stole your land, you need to ask us to give it back to you. You need to request that we give it back. Now, we didn't request to take your land. We stole it by killing you by the millions, but you have to ask us to take the land. You can't just do what we did. See, what we did was expel you. What you're doing is violent eviction, violence. When we killed you by the millions, that was, man, that was just too bad. When we, when you only killed a couple of hundred of us who were shooting at you, by the way, when you only killed a couple of hundred of us who were violently trying to kill you, well, that was wrong. White supremacy doesn't care about reality. They don't care about facts. White supremacy is about power, wealth, influence, control. And dominating you. And if they got to lie, so what? If they got to make things up, so what? If they got to leave out huge swaths of history, so what? This is about control. And your so-called press right there in on it. The Brits right there. Because they want access to Africa's resources. And they understand that you need agents on the ground. There should not be a single one of those invaders on African soil, in African government, in African consciousness. You should not be there. You are invaders. And it is a desecration. It is an abomination to have invaders on African soil attempting to dictate to melanated people what we can have and what we cannot have on our own soil. It's an abomination. We're going to go ahead and see about opening up the phone lines here now. The number is 646-787-1933. 646-787-1933 is your personal access code to the Black is Radio program in existence. Definitely join us. I got a few more things I want to get to here first, but I want to try to take a couple of phone calls. Caller from 239, you're on live with the Black Channel. Oh, just listen in. I'll press 2. Hmm. Uh, I don't think 2 is actually an option. Okay, let's not take any phone calls right now then, since I see the nonsense is getting kicked off early. As black people, this has been a long time coming. The idea that we as black people have a right and privileges to our own land. This is a radical concept to a bunch of black folk. This is radical. A bunch of black folk are going to sit here and say to us, you know, it's okay that things are like this. Why should we have to confront any of this now? Why should we be doing anything about any of this now? Why should we be doing that? 
We should just let them stay. They have a right to be there without knowing any of the facts, without caring. Why? Because most black people see them, themselves through the eyes of white supremacy. And because they see themselves through the eyes of white supremacy, they actually make the arguments of white supremacy for white supremacy when they're around black people. We have a bunch of people who've been brainwashed to be agents of white supremacy standing right in your presence. Right in your presence. Standing right next to you. And they make the arguments of white supremacy for them. They're here to tell you that you, not them, not the invaders, that the white supremacists are the ones being oppressed. That the people that the white supremacists murdered by the millions to take their land, those folk are now the oppressors. And these, the, the invaders have never been called invaders. They've never been required to do anything to make restitution for what they've done. Never. And you've never seen the Associated Free Press put up stories about millions of Africans living in poverty because of the land that European invaders stole. You've never seen them say that. Never seen them do an article about that. And they're not going to. Because they are on the side. They are a propaganda wing of these invaders. And the invading powers. They're on the side of the invaders. They're on the invader's side. And in the 21st century, we must press unrelentingly and uncompromisingly to ensure that we do what is necessary to reverse this thousand years of darkness. The white corporate media, the white press is going to be against you. They're against us, but clearly they are now conceding that this is no longer the minority. This is no longer a fringe minority. This is the heart and soul of the people talking. The people want this. The people want this. And they are now here to try to convince you that the popular will of the people is wrong. So look for the United States and the United Nations to now say that we need to remove the democratically elected government in South Africa and replace them with somebody who does what we want them to do. Because this is not about what's right and wrong. This is about power, wealth, influence, and control. And, they are, and the annihilation of African peoples around the world. That is what this is about. That is what this has always been about. And that's what it remains about to this day. That's what it has always been about. It hasn't changed and it's not going to change. Let's take another phone call here. Um, is this a Skype caller on the line right now? Skype caller, you're on live with the Black Channel. And this is why I do, usually don't take calls over Skype because these folks tend to play on the lines. So let me go ahead and remove you and make sure you're not calling back in again. Then again, it's probably the white supremacists playing on the phones. They're very, very angry, very, very upset. They don't like tonight's subject matter. They don't like what we're talking about. We're discussing Africans being in control of African soil. They're upset about that. Understand, that's not just comments from one or two people. That's around the world. That's around the world that you're seeing comments like that. That's around the world that they're saying that Africans should not even be in control of our own African soil. But when you go carjack one of them, they send the police, the FBI, the SWAT team, they give you mandatory minimum sentences. Well, then white supremacy now needs to be subjected to to a mandatory minimum sentence. If we can give black men mandatory minimum sentences, then white supremacy should now get a mandatory minimum sentence. It's only fair and it's only right. 
white supremacy should now get a mandatory minimum sentence. White supremacy should now be subject to the exact same rules and the exact same games that they've been playing with everybody else. They should now be subjected to that. They should now have to live under the rules that they created. If it's okay for us to walk in and take things from people, it, we're going to start with you now. Isn't it amazing how that's the way they play things? They started this of going in and invading people and taking what they got, and now they're telling you that you have no right to take what belongs to you. That after he has it, he has some divine right, some manifest destiny. Here you are in the 21st century with them clearly in that news article, they were claiming manifest destiny. That the fact that they are white and they took it gives them the right to keep it. That was what they said. The fact that they are white and they've taken it from you, that gives them the right that gives them a right to have it. Now my question for you is in the 21st century, is that what you're going to have? Is that what we're going to have here in the 21st century? Are you as black, are, are you as black people going to accept that? We got momentum behind this now. Black empowerment is on a roll. Black empowerment is on the march. It's on the move. The white mainstream media tried to tell you that Julius Malema was an outlier. Now we see that no, it's not. You're up to your same old propaganda. If Julius Malema was an outlier, why is it the president of South Africa ran on a platform saying to reclaim the land? That is what the people want. And the Europeans are going to try to frighten you and say, well, if you don't let us keep the land that we've stolen from you, then we will not give you foreign investment. We don't need foreign investment. We need African ownership. And can you believe the gall of that bastard to sit up here and say that Africans don't need African ownership. Africans need foreign ownership of African land. Not African ownership. We need foreigners. Foreigners owning your ba land is better than Africans owning it. That's what they said. He literally said that. That foreigners owning African land is better and is a better investment than Africans owning African land. So who is he on the side of? Clearly he's on the side of the invaders. Clearly he's on the side of the oppressors. Clearly he's on the side of the colonialists. Remember, in the 21st century, it is now about convincing you that the good old days are anything that keeps you under white supremacy's boot. That the good old days were when you were bowing and scraping. Mental slavery. The strategy of keeping you mentally enslaved is alive and well and everywhere. It is alive and well and everywhere. And the goal is to convince you that your best days were spent under white supremacy's boots. And that you are happy in poverty. And that if you just listen to what they say, they will make a way for you while they give you nothing. Now, they never tell you they got all the resources and it's okay for them to do it like that. Well, we, we need to follow the path that you did. Oh, no, don't follow ours. That's bull crap. That's why Dr. Claude Anderson said that when we have control of these city governments, we're supposed to say that that's a chocolate city, that's a black city, and then we're supposed to start making moves in the interest of black people. But black folk do not want to do that because most black people are waiting for their bed wench invitation. Can I say that? Can I just be honest there? Most black people are waiting for their invitation to be a bed wench. I'm talking about females and males. Most black people are waiting for their invitation to be invited to come whore themselves. Because they are chasing power in white society. We're chasing attention. We're chasing attention.
And as black people, as long as we maintain that mentality, nothing's going to change. I'd like to say that today with the announcement of this proposed law, that hopefully it spreads like wildfire. First, white supremacy understands colonialism falling. First, Zimbabwe. Then, South Africa. Next, you'll be able to do Rwanda, Uganda, Ethiopia. All these places, the Europeans and the Portuguese. Invaders have come in, come in and stolen land. Now, you, if this spreads, you're going to start seeing it come to a screeching halt. And they're going to try to scare you and tell you that you can't build an African economy on your own. You can only build an African economy with Europeans in control of it. Now, why are these Europeans not simply coming over and making investments in African businesses? They're not doing that. They're just bringing their businesses over and using you as their next acquisition. They're not coming to Africans and saying, here's $20 billion we're going to invest in African businesses. They're bringing their European businesses and saying, we're just using you for the resources. The land, the oil, the diamonds. But you will own nothing of our companies. We will own your land, but you will own nothing of our companies that make all this wealth. You will own nothing of that. Not one penny. You'll own nothing. Now, how many of you are falling for that sleight of hand? How many of you are so desperate for that pat on the head for massa that you're actually falling for that? How many of you? And how many of you have made the decision, kill the boar? How many of you have made the decision, death to white supremacy? How many of you? How many of you? I just want to leave you with that thought tonight. I just want to leave you with that thought. How many of you are ready and prepared for that? How many of you are ready for the 21st century of black empowerment? How many of you are ready for this? I do not co-sign this. I sign this. I do not approve of this. I wholeheartedly endorse it. I endorse this as the only way. And my only regret is that it doesn't go from, from the southern tip of Africa to the northernmost point, including Libya and Egypt. Africa for the Africans. It's not just a slogan. It's a way of life.